Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kaggle Show. My name is Don Agent, and uh, I am I am blown away today. I've actually got uh, a friend of mine here that's a guest with us, Mike Flanagan. Thank you for coming down. You bet, man. Who uh, runs a series of live streaming uh, TV shows and podcasts that far supersedes what I could ever do here. So I'm honored you were able to take time to come out. Um, Mike has been in bowling uh, literally since he's been 13 years old. I think we're having a wonderful show, some great conversation. Um, you started inside bowling essentially in 2010. Yeah. Where you're at currently, we're going to get into all these things that you do, but let's really go back and dive into you're 13 years old. What got you? You know, I mean, you got the bug, you got into it. Give us some of the journey. Yeah, I just went bowling with a neighbor and um, his dad, my dad and started bowling and then in a bowling center called Fair Lanes Organization, which some of the uh, older folks watching would probably know about, uh, offered free bowling in the summertime. So we would, uh, we, would, we would go bowling at 10 in the morning and leave at 8 in the afternoon. We'd bowl two-fingered, back up, two-fingered, regular, right-handed, regular, left-handed. and we so grown worn out. Yeah, yeah, till we, yeah, I mean, we were exhausted. And they didn't have free refills back then, so I had to go to the bowling center with about 20 bucks in my pocket. But... Uh, we drank them out of soda and water at the fountain and uh, just pulled all the time and fell in love with it. And, I, and I'll tell you, what a, you know, for me, I remember we had, we had done a show recently where I just remember that just being such a wonderful, safe environment as a kid. And I mean, it was just a great place to go to any type of bowling center at all. Um, you know, you, you obviously had, uh, it wasn't just about bowling all different types. I mean, you had a pretty good career going up. I mean, you shot through. 313? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, you know, my first ball was a, was a nitro. And for a guy like you, you're probably thinking, wow, your thing ball is your first ball. I nitro or square, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had the blue nitro, 12-pounder, conventional grip. My name was engraved on it. Beautiful. Uh, and that's what I bowled with for a long time. Then I upgraded to a Bud 2, you know, the black U.2. Oh, nice. I had to have one of those, Columbia 300. And uh, then I got a Steel Rhino Pro, you know, resin ball, my first resin ball. And within a month, I, I bowled my first 300 game at, at, at 13. Uh, but I just bowled all the time and uh, just really dedicated myself to bowling. And I was always one of those guys, whenever I bowled, whether if it was in my youth career and in my collegiate and even in some of my adult bowling, which I don't do much bowling now, unfortunately, because I, I do so much with bowling. But uh, I was a guy that had to work at it all the time. If I took a, a series of days off, my, I, I was a field player. I just didn't have it anymore. You suffered. I actually was, was that way, to be yeah. honest with you, so I, I can understand that 100%. You, uh, and, and obviously getting into bowling all of a sudden now, you got the passion to work inside of it as well? Yeah, well, I was pushing carts at a grocery store, and it just didn't make any sense whatsoever to just do that. You know, why not work inside of what I love? So, you know, I started, you know, like a lot of people start out, I was a bottle boy at 16, mm -hmm. and... Uh, there was a critical moment, though, where uh, I started really enjoying technology. Uh, I was the king of AOL, America Online. I still have an AOL address that people That's make awesome. fun of. And one day, I believe what's going to happen is AOL is going to just be gone. And AOL.com is going to be available. And I am going to purchase it. And I am going to make the <laughs> AOL it. Hall of Fame. I, I think that's what I'm, I, one day later in life, and maybe when I'm in a nursing home, I don't know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to purchase AOL.com. That, that's a promise right here, so you can play this back later. But I was the king of the internet. I really was, Don. And and I, at the at the bowling center, I couldn't just pick up bottles. I had to. I kept. I was like a magnet to the desk to, to kick, click the keys to turn lanes on. And you know the the old AMF uh, scores, the three 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 X, the one 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 X. Have to put in your bowler ID numbers and stuff like that. So I taught myself the desk when I really wasn't supposed to. And there was a night that a person got fired, and the general manager had to come in to run the bowling center. And general managers typically don't know how to run the computer systems. I did. I bailed them <laughs> out. Excuse me. I was closing a bowling center, you know, one night a week about a month later, you know, for the general manager. As so, a teenager. As a teenager, 16 years old. My mom would pick me up at 1 in the morning to pick me up from my shift. I'd go to high school the next day. That's awesome. So. <coughs> I love to be in the center. Excuse me. That water caught me the wrong way. You, you got into that part of bowling, but, you know, you, technology is really what drew you into it. I mean, you literally, you know, let's fast forward a little bit. You were live streaming bowling almost for anybody else was on a, on a well there's a few out there doing yes and no i mean the the, the pba strike pass was the was the you know the innovator and, that was the first and then usbc rolled in with uh bull tv mm -hmm. and there was you know this guy lucas wiseman you know right. which many people know about lucas uh but then what i was able to do with brian burkhardt a guy from the st louis area eagle winner tech guru if it wasn't for him i wouldn't be where i am today 
Brian was the one that kind of took me under his wing and started pushing me to want to do more from live streaming. I was just live streaming with a laptop from a bowling tournament on Ustream from the webcam on the laptop. I would sit behind it, type a little bit just for fun. I didn't sure. think it would lead to a career. And I would just turn it around when it was my turn to bowl with my buddy and we'd commentate on each other. That was the very first live stream for Inside Bowling. And that was it. You know, we've kind of been off to the races ever since. I mean, it's, you know, obviously you've got Inside Bowling, which you started in 2010. Yep. Right? It was just an online message board in the St. Louis market for bowlers to connect and talk before Facebook was huge and uh, Twitter was around and things like right. that. MySpace was kind of the hot thing at that time still. But I do remember that. You know, I'm, I'm still kind of new with the tech world here. I think I told you earlier I just got on the, the Facebook, as I like to call it, one year ago. So I'm still kind of <laughs> trying to figure all that out. But, I mean, you really, I mean, you're pretty diversified in your company. I mean, you've got a lot of responsibilities. You've been immersed in bowling for your whole life. You currently, uh, you know, in 2015, uh, Ebonite Bowling International, and yourself as well as obviously inside bowling, Corby Dub formed a partnership. Um, you do a lot of freelance stuff on top of that. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you know, what got you to really create that company? I mean, is it? Well, I, I think it's safe to say that, you know, I, I ran, most of my career has been running bowling centers. I ran bowling centers for AMF, Brunswick, and then Independence. And I excelled in the independent space because I'm, not, I'm an entrepreneur. And a lot of people, uh, either they, they either love me or, or they hate me. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm very opinionated, and I don't like to sit back and wait for my time to then be able to speak up. Well, and you're a straight shooter. And sometimes people take offense to people that shoot straight. I am. I have a heart of gold, and I don't ever mean to um, be rude or to offend anyone. And when I do, it actually hurts me. But uh, just inside, I just don't like it. But I, I was provided with some opportunities. Uh, Tom Clark from the PBA provided an opportunity for me to do some live streaming with them, which took my game to the next level. I was doing my own rinky-dink stuff with Inside Bowling, not to take away from what I was doing, sure. but the opportunity to be able to go out and work the PBA and call action for the greatest bowlers in the world. A lot of these guys I grew up bowling youth tournaments with, Bill O'Neill, Mike Fagan, guys like that, and I kind of had their respect anyway, but then when I was able to go out there, it's a whole new ball game. You got all your heroes as well. Oh, yeah. Pete, yeah, Pete Weber and I, you know, we're, we're good buddies. I saw, you know? that, so, I saw one of the pictures of you and all there. Like, oh, oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. So, and I love Pete, you know, and he's another guy I love, hate relationship, but, but Tom Clark gave me an opportunity. So, so, so that's, that's one, of the, one of the ends. And then there's a guy by the name of Roger Nordhook, who currently right now works for the United States Bowling Congress. He gave me an opportunity at Storm Bowling Products to go and work there. And I didn't, I didn't last through the system there for a very long period of time. Uh, they're very successful at what they do. Wasn't a great match for me, especially when Roger moved on. Sure. Um, I don't have anything disrespectful to say to them at all. Uh, it just wasn't a good fit anymore. They, got it, they, they have a proven way of doing things, and I wish them all the best. Uh, but it was best for me to, to part ways. And it was at that point in time that I said, you know what, this is just a better thing if I can just run my own company and see if anybody would like my company to do digital work in some way, shape, or form, whether if it's posting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, whether somebody wanted to offer me a, uh, an opportunity to just go stream 50 weeks a year, tournament series, or whatever. I didn't know what it was going to be, but Ebonite and I struck up a deal. And it worked out very, very well to handle their digital marketing and help them on a consulting basis with some of their marketing stuff. And they have treated me great in three and a half years. They're, they're and I'm company. super happy. They really are. I mean, it, for us at Kaggle, it's kind of a, I, I don't, it's not a weird situation. It, it seems like that to other people at times in the industry, but we're, we're kind of neutral. We, we're friends with everybody, as you know, you know, I mean, we're friends with Brunswick, we're friends with Evan I. You guys are Switzerland. And, and that's essentially what we exactly are. Exactly what you are. Uh, Randy Shecker, great guy, been there a long time. Um, he's CEO? Yeah. That's, I yeah. thought he was. Yeah. Okay, I thought he was. Shout out to you, Randy, if you're watching the show. <laughs> that, that last time we got to see each other, we were in, uh, actually in Minnesota on the trade show run. Um, you know, all these things you've, you've done with Ammonite and Storm and on your own, this has led to some other things that I really want to touch base on. You got a podcast, man, or, or you're, you're working on a yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of like you to really promote that, kind of tell us all about it, and I'm excited to hear about it, or what you can tell, obviously. Yeah, so I had a podcast in 2010 into 2011, it was called the Inside Bowling Show. Okay. And my buddy Doug Lakey and I, who was involved with Inside Bowling in the beginning, we did that for two years. 
And then it just we just kind of went away from doing it. There were, there were no revenue generating. It was kind of a pain to do. We got to talk to all our favorite bowlers in the world. And once you kind of did that a couple times, it was you know kind of enough. So uh, I ended up moving to Utah and whatnot to take a job and things like that. But podcasts have become a big, big thing. And since I started this digital marketing agency is really what it's become, I have studied everything out there from YouTube to all these different trends uh, around the world. And more and more people, Don, this is what's happening in the world, and, and everybody will agree to this, people are multitasking. You used to sit on your couch and watch a program and maybe have a conversation with the other person in the room, or you say, shh, 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 hey, show's on. Commercial break, Absolutely. catch me, right? That was, that was me and my parents, without a doubt. Well, all, everybody watching, everybody can attest to this. What's happening right now is you are on your phone and watching television. You're doing two things at once. You're texting someone, you're playing your Candy Crush, you're waiting for your ad to clear so you can upgrade in some sort of game or whatever you're doing. You're getting text messages, you're on Facebook, you're checking to see if somebody did this. If you're watching a sporting event, you're seeing who's saying what on Twitter. But you're doing all these extra things now, okay? Well, there's another thing that's happening. People have an earbud in. Headphone sales are through the roof now compared to they were 10 years ago, okay? So people are working in cubicles, people are working out, people are in their car and they're listening to something. And many, many people are getting away from music because you hear the same song over and over again and entrepreneurship and learning is becoming more cool and hip. It's a new trend. So I said, you know what? I want to accomplish more things this year. I started an e-commerce website on InsideBowling.com and cool. you can save 15% with coupon code Kegel. I'm making that active right now. I mean, 15% buddy, game on, coupon code Kegel. Gentlemen. I went on the website, shirts are killer on there. You've got some pretty neat designs. Yeah, so. So, we, so we did that in February and I said I want to do something else before the end of the year and I want to start this podcast. I have seven of them recorded already. Your CEO is one of my guests. It's already recorded in the can. I got Dave Ryan, I got Randy Shickard, I got a bunch of different people, oh, wow. Parker Bone. I've already recorded all these. I got a couple sponsorship deals lined up that I'm just waiting to sign off on the paperwork before I make this thing live. I'm recording two more next week. So you'll be able to find my podcast, Inside Bowling with Mike Flanagan, uh, anywhere you find podcasts, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, Google Play Store. They'll all be there. Or you can check any of my social media, which is everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, forward slash Inside Bowling, and you can find all the details. You know, the social media journey, you know, for... Not that I'm a hundred years old, but for people my age that, you know, in reality, our generation are the ones that did create all this to begin with, or wouldn't be here. Um, I never embraced a lot of it, but, you know, definitely within the last, uh, I'd say five years, if not decade, I mean, it, it just, it seems the, the new way of the world, whether it's advertising, information gathering, um, you know, I mean, it's it just... Where you know the podcasts. I mean, I would sit down and read a book, but once again, you can't multitask. You can't mm -hmm. listen and get good information because you can't read a book and work on the computer at the same time. It's just not real life. And, and I, I love these things going forward. I, I don't know that we'll ever delve into one or not. I'll have to talk to Antoine behind the camera there and our marketing uh, crew. But I, I think it's fantastic. Do you have any idea? I know you're waiting for paperwork. Are you going to try to release one before the end of the year? You think? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's yeah. coming. She's coming around the mountain. You can see her coming right now. It it'll definitely be there. Uh, as far as advice for you and anybody that's listening, if you do a video show like this, you should just take the audio file and just throw it out there. You can use the Anchor app and get it out to everyone and just let people listen to an audio version of this. They don't have to watch it on your Facebook page. It's a great show. You have an awesome set here, but why not just put that thing out wherever you possibly can? You know, I I got this. You know, once again, I mean, it was just a cool surprise this morning when Chris caught me. He's like, "Hey, man, you know, Mike's Mike's in Tampa." I'm like, "What the hell is he doing in Tampa? What were you in Tampa for?" Oh, we were doing a ball shoot. My man Corey's actually in the back of the room. You can't okay. see him, but he's one of the people that work with me. We're a team of five now at Inside Bowling, plus Brian, so I guess actually six. And uh, we're growing. You know, we keep investing in people. You know, as we add new clients, I don't just throw it in, uh, in my pocket. We we pay more people to do more and try to grow it that way. We want to scale. We want to be able to do a lot of things. But we were doing two video ball shoots for uh, one of our clients, Evan International, obviously. And uh, we were in Orlando shooting something with Jason Couch, and then we were just in Tampa with uh, AJ Rice and, and Tom Doherty. So right. so look for those on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube channels for Absolutely. the Ebonite International brand. I'm a huge, huge fan of Jason Couchery. You know, I was able to compete against him many times and, and lost him many times. I beat him once or twice in my very short-lived career. You also had some college background bowling-wise. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, yeah. I like, to, I like to go back and forth, you know. Yeah. Um, what was unique when we were talking is, I mean, 
this program was fairly new at the at the last college you had went into. Yeah, well, well, first of all, I hate school. Uh, you and I, I, you and I agree on I that. I just program. and 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 if school's your thing, uh, good, great. I mean, I'm hats off to you. I but love education. I was just sure. not a good formal student. Yeah, I, YouTube. I can pick up a lot. Learn how to make a lot of videos there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I Google search everything. That's my school. What school you go to? I go to Google. Uh, but but here here here's here's the thing with that. Um, I went to college. I hopped around colleges. I landed at Lindenwood University when the program first started. Uh, I came in as a as a mid season transfer, uh, and I bowled three hundred at one of the first events I went to. It was the first three hundred in Lindenwood history. That's wild. Now I, I didn't tell you this part, and I gotta tell it. There was a guy by the name of Mike Hallway who was the coach, who, who was who was kind of a maniac. Okay, uh, he actually walked around with a one hitter cigarette in his in his mouth. Okay, <laughs> nice well, during idea. coaching. Yes, okay, I've seen okay, that. one one hitter. Yeah, he's passed away since then. Like, God rest your soul, Mike. But in the tenth frame, I threw the front nine perfectly, and then I went up in the tenth frame, and the very first shot, I was leadoff bowler. Okay, kind of an animated guy. You know, gotta gotta set the tone. I went up in the very first shot, duck hooked at the arrows, and just kind of rolled out, backed up into the Brooklyn pocket for a strike, okay? No, now, I've got, I've got everybody's attention, right? Because I, now everybody's kind of stopped around me, and I'm high-fiving my teammates. There's a guy by the name of Todd Pagano, bold second right behind me. Had watched me bowl for years, St. Louis guy, everything was cool. I said, Todd, I throw it bad? He said, no, you didn't throw it bad at all. He said, it looked good to me. I said, okay, I'm just gonna make the same shot, you know? Early burn. Yeah, just maybe I grabbed it, a little slow, whatever, right? Go up the next shot, same exact thing happened. Duck, duck hooks at the arrows, rolls out, you know, Brooklyn strike. Now everybody's saying, who is this guy? You know, this is the luckiest 300 game. Right, right. The last two. So I moved seven and three oh left Lord. for the 12th shot. That's a big transition. I know, ridiculous. Like, who would ever recommend this? I've always been uh, an extremist. Two okay. And three, right. So I'm sure I just changed something, you know, under the pressure or whatever. But I'm like, I got to do this now. So I moved in and I had a messenger come out, take out the 10, 300, slapped it out. And uh, I had 300. Now Mike Hallway went on for many, many years to exaggerate that story. I had guys come up to me or send me text messages years later saying, dude, that was the ballsiest move I ever heard. You, you move three arrows left? <laughs> move, move your eyes in seven? That's the ballsiest move I've ever heard. Unbelievable. Three, three and one wasn't three boards and one. It was three He, arrows he loved arrows. telling that story. That's fantastic, man. And I'm glad he did. You know, we've got, and, and I'm sure obviously you're around a, a lot of up-and-coming youth, um, pro staffers. Um, I have actually had this question, not only from uh, some, I call them kids, but obviously some of the young adults here that even bowl for Weber and are under ball contracts with, you know, uh, Ebonite, Motive, Storm, Bronze, sure. what have you. Some of the questions come up to me as, an, and obviously I'm not the guy to answer this, what would be a, some tips you would give for those people to try and enhance their, I guess, social media profile or exposure type of is it, is it just being on it and hard work, or, or is it, you know, what are some guidelines that might make that where they can reach people a little bit more, I guess? Well, they should be authentic okay. in anything that they do. It shouldn't be rehearsed. Um, sometimes that gets to be a little hairy in our industry, though, okay. because authentic uh, typically can mean not politically correct or acceptable to the masses. Sure. Because that's just the way bowlers are. Um, so sometimes you put on a fake persona or you get scared, especially when you sign on with that ball company of posting the wrong thing and getting a nasty okay. email or gotcha. a text message from someone. But if you can be authentic in what you do in a tasteful way, that would be like the, the first thing. I will take an example. I went around, I went to VidCon a couple years ago okay. because I set up a third monitor in my office having YouTube playing all the time on trending videos. And this is when I first started my digital marketing business working with Ebonite. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn everything I possibly could. I'm still learning all the time. I had to go to VidCon and meet these YouTube stars. I had to see what this was all about. And I snuck in, I got into a party safely, but I had to horn schwaggle my way in talking to the Samsung people to get into this party. And I went and I met them all. I vlogged it. It's actually on my YouTube channel. If you type in uh, Mike Flanagan's first vlog at Casey Neistat's party, I know it's a long thing to type in, but type it in on YouTube, you'll see me. I met Alex Mandel, Furious Pete, David Dobrik. I mean, I met all these people, and you can see me, this maniac with this camera, G7X camera, walking around talking to all these people. And it was, it was when I found all that out that this whole world of YouTube really opened up for me. And I started talking to pro, pro bowlers that are on Ebonite staff, talking to them about 
you know, hey, why don't you start a YouTube channel? You guys could really start getting some great things going here. And uh, there was one person that took me up on it and started dedicating himself to it. And his name's Kyle Sherman. Okay. And he and Brad Miller, who's also a very good friend of mine, St. Louis area guys, uh, Brad from Kansas City, they didn't think they could do it by themselves. And so they needed to do it together to push each other to do it. And their YouTube channel just rolled 6,000 subs, Brad and Kyle. And they're putting out some really nice content. They're doing some uh, tr uh, instructional videos, and they're teaching people how to bowl. And I, I would recommend their channel to anybody. Uh, and, and it's things like that, you know, providing value. You have someone that came out of this area here, uh, Daria. Okay, okay. You know, she's, she's got great appeal to people. She's always just a bundle of joy. She's, you know, very, very pretty on the eyes, but also, a, but, but very, very happy and smiling all the time. She's a great human being, man. She needs to do more. I actually get angry when I see these great personalities do a mediocre to good job. I want to see him do a great or extraordinary job. As much as Pete Weber over the years has been the guy to really put bowling back on the map with the PDW, you know, persona, sure. he didn't do enough. His father was on The Late Show with David Letterman bowling the television screens. Absolutely. Why didn't Pete continue on that? You know, because these pro bowlers don't have publicists. They yeah, can't I afford publicists. Defense, exactly. You know, a guy like Belmo right now. I was going to say, now that guy there seems he's, like he's pretty He's hungry. knocking he's on team. doors. Yes. Dude, perfect. I mean, I've known Jason for many, many years, and, and it's, uh, you know, he seems like, and also due to his age, being a little bit more immersed in, in this type of, of marketing one's self, um, I think he's done a fantastic job. I mean, really, because you know that's another. You talk politically correct, and it's, that's another thing where we get into the, the conversations. You know, what do you think about two hand versus this? And sure. That, you know, it, it, there's just number one. If no matter who you are, or how you bowl, if you're doing what is allowed and permitted by our governing body of the sport, that is the end of the discussion, in my opinion. Um, I think he was a fantastic ambassador and has been for the sport. Tim Mack was another mm, one absolutely. on the international mm -hmm. level. Um, you'd throw up guys like Bill Hoffman and Kurt Pilon and, and you know, there's just so many out there that, that did so well and marketed themselves. And you're right. I, I think that if people, some of the older bowlers like the Pete's and Amletos and, and Norms, if there had been either publicists assigned sure. or, or there was a platform that they would have been able to get into a little bit earlier. Collaboration is the word today. That's the key word is collaboration. If you can collaborate with people that have following, you can grow your own following. That's how you do it. Because if Jason Belmonte and Dude Perfect do something together, it helps Jason Belmonte grow. Just like pro bowlers, Brad and Kyle. What if somebody else starts a channel and they do a collaboration with Brad and Kyle and Brad and Kyle say, hey, go follow this person. They're going to get 1,000 subs Just overnight nice. because they appeared in Brad and Kyle's video. And if, and if everybody was working together and taking up the YouTube, I think YouTube is the lost platform. For whatever reason, ball companies, um, I don't even, I haven't looked at your YouTube channel. We so. get very little views, to be honest with you. I mean, you and I sit here talking, I've talked with Antoine about it. To me, we get more views on our Facebook page than we do on the YouTube so, page. So what generally, we may not know what we're doing. Well, so what will happen there is you'll <laughs> say, oh, let's just do Facebook, and you'll ignore YouTube because it's just kind of the easy go-to button. But you should be active in all those spaces and promoting them all the time. And if you're not getting views, you're not providing enough value. Okay. How, can, how can Brad and Kyle have 6,000 subscribers and many, many ball manufacturers out there don't have 6,000 subscribers, and they've been around since YouTube's been invented. And multi, multi million dollars. It's got to be a priority. Correct. If you make it a priority, you'll be successful. But for whatever reason, Facebook came in and blocked YouTube and the bowling industry. All the bowling manufacturers put their money into Facebook, maybe a little bit into Instagram, a little bit into Twitter, but it, YouTube has been ignored. And YouTube, behind Google, and it's owned by Google, is the number two search engine in the That's world, wild. not Facebook. Not everybody has Facebook, but almost everybody goes to YouTube. I would not have known that. If, you're, if your washer or dryer goes out, what do you do to try to fix it? You go to well, YouTube. Honestly, as a mechanic, I use, <laughs> I know I use yeah. YouTube. I have 100%. I've gone in the codes for things, and, and that was one of the things when we talked about internally. How come, you know, 
not that we have millions of followers, obviously, but how can we get more views, or why do we have less here and not enough, you know, versus we have more over here, and that, that's something I think we'll be contending to work at. Yeah, better content. Um, maybe maybe I'll get Chris to hire you down for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Party with us, you can give me some side tips. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. Make this a little bit better. Brother, we're gonna go take a tour. Yeah. Man, it was absolute pleasure to have you down, and, and sorry we, we got Corey in the background back there. We've That's got, all right. Only he looks good. Chairs we can, only got a couple of chairs we can actually get to back behind the table. But listen, you got safe travels back tonight. You're going to be flying out of Orlando, and uh, we will definitely be in touch. And I, on personally and on behalf of Kegelik, thank you for everything you've done for the sport of bowling and, and getting the, the word out to more and more people around the globe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap for the day. Keep those wrenches turning. Have a wonderful day.